We're used to getting big dividend checks from our stock portfolio, but now Fidelity is giving out big monthly payments. But wait, how could Fidelity, a privately owned company, be giving out monthly income? Fidelity is a financial giant founded in 1946. They manage $4.5 trillion in assets as Fidelity is one of the largest asset managers in the world. Their assets under administration, which is money that they are not actually managing, is nearly $12 trillion. So you can see why so many people trust Fidelity as the brokerage firm that they use to buy and sell securities. I'm one of Fidelity's 40 million customers, and lately I've been getting some double digit payments each month. Notice how I didn't say dividend payments, and that's because these are not dividend payments, but they're actually interest payments. You see, uninvested cash with Fidelity actually has an opportunity to earn interest. Fidelity refers to uninvested cash as core positions. There is three options for non-retirement accounts. There's the taxable interest-bearing cash option known as F-Cash. Hmm. There is the Fidelity Treasury Fund known as FZFXX, no relation to FTX, thank God. Then we also have Fidelity's government money market fund known as SPACs. So F-Cash, yeah, F-Cash, what a great name. I'm sure it has no symbolic meaning. This is just a free credit balance and money that is able to be used on demand and doesn't actually go into any sort of money market fund. Thus, it offers the lowest of yield, which as of today is 1.57%. FZFXX, which I will just be referring to as FX from now on, and SPACs are almost identical. They are taxable money market funds. They are essentially investing in US Treasury debt and securities. If we take a look at SPACs' holdings, it's just a bunch of US Treasury bills, coupons, repurchase agreements, etc. FX's holdings are pretty much the same, consisting of government securities. Now these are very short-term products that offer great liquidity. Whenever you need that money to spend or transfer, it will be there. Both of these charge the same expense ratio of 42 basis points, but this is uninvested cash that wasn't doing anything and wasn't making you any money, so you might as well get some return on your money. Another important thing to note here is that I'm not going to say that there's no risk involved, but there's very minimal when invested in government securities. The US government is not going to default on its obligations. They can always just print more money, because money printer go burr. It's about as safe as an investment as one can get. If the government defaulted on its debt, we'd have much bigger problems to worry than you getting interest payments from Fidelity. And as you can see, this gets very attractive when both of these are currently yielding a 3.3% rate, essentially very little risk and a decent upside. Now these yields are still less than the ridiculous 8% inflation we're currently experiencing, but one always has to be looking for ways to grow their money. Otherwise, if you just leave it in a bank account with no interest, you will be losing money in terms of losing purchasing power in the long run. Since the stock market historically returns 7 to 10% annually over the long run, it wouldn't make much sense to just park all your money into these money market funds. There's better alternatives in the long run to make more money in growing companies and companies that pay out dividends. Really, I view this as a place to park my short-term money that I'm going to be using in the next couple months. I already have my 6 to 12 month emergency fund set up in my normal checking and savings accounts. Another very important note to keep in mind with money market funds is the interest rate is not fixed. It's heavily dependent on interest rate fluctuations and monetary policy. From March 2020 all the way up until basically just a few months ago, the interest rate from Fidelity was virtually zero because the federal interest rate was close to zero. Then inflation got and continues to get ridiculous, so Uncle Jerome and the feds have raised it aggressively to cool down inflation. Thus, that's why you see Fidelity's interest rate continue to rise, and now they offer actually a pretty decent yield. If you're wondering what I use, I go with FX in my taxable account, earning 3.36% as of today, and I get those payments on the last day of each month, which would be an average of my cash balance and the interest rate on each particular day. In retirement accounts, only SPACs is allowed to be chosen. At the end of the day, there really isn't much difference between the two, and they typically should only be used as short-term investments anyway, and not long-term ones. Now, if you needed even more assurance that this money is safe, I confirmed with Fidelity that money in FX and SPACs are not FDIC insured, but they are SIPC insured. SIPC would protect up to 500,000 in securities 
and 250,000 in cash if the brokerage, aka Fidelity, went bankrupt. So not only are we protected that the US government won't be going bankrupt, we're also covered in case Fidelity went under as well. But given Fidelity's amazing track record, I don't see that ever happening. The only thing that's stronger than this is corruption in FIFA. All right, investors, that's a summary of the different Fidelity core positions. Make sure you leave a like on this video, help out a small time YouTuber. It really does make a difference. Make sure you're subscribed and make sure you listen to my podcast under the Clack Cash podcast name and I'll cash you on the next one.